public act of violence cannot go unpunished. David Willis, BBC News, Los Angeles. Well, one person who really does know about the pressures of stand-up comedy and hosting big events is the comedian Alan Davis, who we can speak to now live from North London. Morning, Alan. Really good to see you this morning. Hi, um, hi there. I, I, you know, you have huge experience of working with live audiences um, and people reacting at, you know, in a moment. Sometimes, I don't know, does it get a little bit tricky? I just, I'm interested to know what you thought when you saw that moment play out on the Oscars stage. I don't think he was making a joke about uh, hair loss. That's that's what I think. And I think it's interesting in your report that Chris Rock made a joke about alopecia. Chris Rock made a joke about her medical condition. I think I think Chris Rock saw her in a fitted green dress, although from the waist down, it's obviously this big skirt, but it's fitted from the waist up. It's a kind of military green up to the neck and to the wrists with her, the hair the way it is at the moment, the kind of shaven look. She's got this striking jawline. She's a very beautiful woman. She resembled Demi Moore. And he saw that and thought of G.I. Jane, and he made the joke. And he tried to keep it down as short as he could to about eight words, referencing that. If, if anything, I imagine that he thought it was paying her a compliment. And it was turned on its head. Perhaps that's his mistake, because it wasn't, I'm told, a script joke it wasn't on the auto cue it's something that when he came up with it I don't know maybe when he saw them arriving or maybe it was just on the spot and initially there was a laugh and you could tell from his demeanor it wasn't meaning to get at her and then there was a little turn in the audience I feel at the moment there's a false equivalence between what Chris did and what Will did and what Will did was a serious assault and what Chris did was actually a mild and, and not a nasty remark so well, you'd expect me perhaps to stick up for the comedian, but that's my take on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess the thing is that in award ceremonies over the last few years, it's become a bit of a thing, hasn't it, for the for the hosts or the guests to to poke fun, to to roast individual members of the audience, to to point at them uh, and to joke at their expense. Uh, has things, even if you're right about uh, what what Chris Rock said last night, have things gone too far? Do we need to sort of have a bit more respect with our audiences for award ceremonies? Um, maybe uh, people. Some people, if you're making those sorts of jokes, um, you might upset people. And the defence of it's just a joke is not always adequate. But in this instance, what Will Smith did next is wildly disproportionate and speaks to some other issues in his life. What I thought was fascinating, having been someone who's on stage often, is that where were the security? I suppose he could just breeze through because he's Will Smith. But you imagine that if someone's trying to get on stage at the Oscars, they'll be taken down by some plain clothes person in a tuxedo carrying a sidearm in row two. <laughs> you couldn't get to Jeremy Kyle without getting rugby tackled. <laughs> How on earth? And the other thing is about it, if someone did that in a comedy club, got up, sat the comedian, sat back down and started swearing and yelling abuse at him, they'd be ejected. And I was amazed that he's able to return to his seat and pick up his prize. I, I imagine he feels deep personal shame and he's under a huge pressure. They live their marriage out in the public eye on her chat show. They talk about her affair. They, they live their entire life, their family life and the children's lives in the public eye. So if he's going to have a meltdown, it was always going to be in the public eye. But at the Oscars, oh dear. Alan, I'm interested in what you're saying. You know, I completely appreciate what you're saying about Will Smith's reaction. But in terms of the comedian, Chris Rock, on stage, uh, you know, as you say, we know a lot about these people, don't we? Because they're so very open. Will Smith's wife, Jada, is very, very open about their marriage. She's spoken about losing her hair, about having alopecia and dealing with that. In Chris Rock's brain, he must have known that, though. He must have had some idea that this was a, a medical condition. Do you think that didn't even enter his head when he made the joke? Or do you think it was almost like that was somewhere in there and he knew it was pushing, like it was almost stepping over a line? I think there may have been, that remark may have been laced with some other thoughts about uh, Jada Pinkett and Will Smith. And they, that may be what Will felt when he received it. But I honestly thought he was thinking, he was phrasing it, he thought in an almost a complimentary way. And I, I have a little difficulty with people saying that they're offended and getting upset and wanting comedians to moderate what they say. Um, my, my instinct, and any comedian's instinct, is always, when you're told to moderate what you say, your instinct is always to do the opposite. And I'm sure that's Chris Rock's instinct. I'm a fan of Chris Rock. I've got tickets to see him at the Albert Hall in May. 
And so I'm, a, you know, I'm an apologist for him. But I, I, I don't think he meant to reference that, and I don't think the reaction was, was in any way reasonable. So, yeah, I, I'll stick up for the comic, I'm afraid. Will Smith has, uh, some people would say, belatedly uh, issued a, a, an apology to Chris Rock personally now overnight, and he said that his behaviour was unacceptable and inexcusable. Um, is that enough? Some people are saying that maybe the Oscar that he's just been given should be should be taken away as punishment. What do you think? No, 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 that's nonsense. I mean, he might get arrested. You could face a charge for an assault like that. People face charges and they're arrested for far lesser offences. That's, that's possible. But I feel sorry for him because I, the pressure on those people out there, you can't get from the, you know, the hotel room to the car without being, you, there's, there's an anxiety and a fear all the time. And, People say, oh, it's just what you get, you're famous, you're reaping the rewards, this is the payoff. But nowadays it's worse than ever with social media and everything else, and the scrutiny and the pressure and the stress and the anxiety, and he, and he blew up. Perhaps somewhere inside him, he, he didn't want it all, it was too much. Um, but this should have been a great night for him, I haven't seen the film, but I'm sure he's excellent, he's a very good actor. I feel sorry for him. There's too much, too much made of the Oscars, too much pressure on them all, too many interviews, too much stuff to do. To, to, their brains must be exploding. Alan Davis, it is so fascinating to talk to you this morning. Really interesting perspective. Thank you very much to do. That's Alan Davis Thank talking you. to us live from North London. He makes a really good point. Where was security? Yeah. If that had happened anywhere else, if you weren't Will Smith, you'd yeah, be stopped. But, but imagine if they'd stopped Will Smith. Well, on his night at the Oscars yeah, when everybody gets going, so, you know, yeah. they wouldn't have done that, would they? Uh, it's 23 minutes past seven. Uh, Matt's been warning us about the weather and it's a bit cold and it's getting murky, yeah? It is pretty murky this morning, getting colder as we go through the rest of the week. But look at this, rather atmospheric start to the morning up in Carlton Hill in uh, Edinburgh. And quite misty for a few of you this morning if you're about to head outside. Best of the sunshine in the west. I 